we go into it. Hello and welcome to the Reds Report. After the Easter break, two of us spend the afternoon lazing on the sofa and watching the football. One of us swam 400 metres, cycled 13 miles and then a five-mile five mile run, all in one metre 26. Steve, well done. Thanks very much. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're that... They're not, they're not, I'm going to say they're not, they're not that daft, are they? Our listeners, they don't think it's me. No, well, well done, uh, Ian, lad. Rather Ian, than me, Ian, Ian, the West Lancashire Spring. All in, all, all, chill. Yeah, well all done. in the middle of... All in the middle of Stone Kathleen as well. Perfect. <laughs> wow. I tell you what. I tell you what. Well, that's the positivity out of the way. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> drag it Boys. back down now. Drag it back down. Boys, we talked uh, a couple of weeks ago about, you know, these eight cup finals that were coming up. Um, draw at home against Cheltenham. Lose at home against Cambridge. Uh, a decent away win. Burton Albion won three. And then yesterday, the second uh, away loss of the season. Um, away at the uh, the Valley of Death, Charlton, uh, two one loss for Barnsley. Plenty to talk about, not only about results, I think about performances as well. Um, let's let let's we might as well start with Charlton because I think there's a lot to say about it. Um, Ian, let's start with you first. Herbie came on the bench. Uh, Neil Collins has said that um, John Russell is playing really well and, and deserved to start. I know we don't see training. I just they're just so opposite. <laughs> What drugs Keep your are face straight. On? Keep your face oh, sorry, straight, man. I, I, I tell you what, you know, we, we can all be a football manager if you play football manager 24. If I was playing Russell, I, I'd probably move Connell further up and, and, and let him sit deep. But um, it's not a, a one-man or a one-player performance, but yesterday, misfiring on many cylinders. Is that fair to say? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I didn't understand his... I mean, the, the, Colin sees him in training, doesn't he? But we lacked any real creativity, at t- certainly in that second half. And Kane does, for all we've maligned him sometimes, he does, he's got more chance of giving you that than Russell has. Russell, we've, we've said it time and again, we've seen enough of him now to make a, a proper judgment on him. He's too slow, he's too pedestrian, he gives the ball away. He doesn't add anything attacking wise. Especially when you're chasing a game, he, he, he's, he's there to be a stopper. Um, so, yeah, I, I didn't understand that. To, and, and I just don't get it. It took Collins months and months to work out his best 11. We talked on here loads of times about he doesn't know his best 11. Then he's hit, he hit a bit of a pur- purple patch, got a settled side. And now it's gone back to like he doesn't know what his best 11 is. And, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of a. Lottery, who, who, who's the starting eleven every week, and he ch- he's chopping and changing the strikers. He doesn't know what his best formula is, and now he started tinkering with the with the midfield. So it's all just unraveling at the wrong end of the season. Yeah, Steve, because it's interesting, isn't it? Because in the last few weeks, um, Herbie Kane was the latest yesterday to be benched, and Russell started. Devante Cole was left out a couple of times. Or was the McAtee and Cosgrove started? Jordan Williams found himself on the bench, obviously. You know, in 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 in, in um. Is, is that giving players a break that may be needing a break? Is that looking for better options on the pitch? Because I just, it, like Ian says, to say we're near, very near the business end of the season, it's weird not knowing what 11 are going to take to the pitch every Tuesday night or Saturday afternoon, isn't it? You look at you look at game yesterday, um, Kane deserved to be on the bench, to be quite honest. Um He's already said he don't want to be here at the next season, which is fine. Um, we all know about the the interview that he gave and his petulance at being substituted a couple of weeks ago. So, see you later. Um, no loss for me. Um, we talk about Russell. And for me, Russell's taking Connell's spot because I don't think Connell's been half as effective even though he's playing sort of a left-hand side, a little bit more forward role, he tends to create more and be more influential on a game, playing in that holding, that sort of free holding role. So, he, so he's got that freedom to roll where Rome, where now he's, he's sort of playing that left-hand side of midfield, which to me I think cuts down his opportunities. No, I don't think Russell's good enough. Um, there's let's be honest, there's a few players on that field that aren't good enough. 
and unfortunately will never be good enough. Um, I think Cole's flattered to deceive. He's had a fantastic start to the season, but unfortunately now I think he's in a way showing his true colours. Um, people will say, oh yeah, he's running about and he's, he's getting involved and this, that and other. But he's not showing any, for me, any sort of professionalism, if you want. Um, he's having a bit of a lean spell that just mm -hmm. keeps going and going. And if anybody should be benched, it should be him. But who are you bringing in? Cosgrove, again, he's hit and miss. First division quality, that's about it. McAtee, for as good a player that we all think he is, you know, yeah, he, he, he runs about and he gets stuck in and we love him for it. But I still think it's, it's, it's still lacking quality and that's the same throughout the team at the minute. We are lacking quality. And that all comes from manager. And I think personally that the manager is lacking a lot of quality. I, when we look, uh, there's often comparisons, Ian, on, uh, on on social media with last year. I just felt last year you could rely on certain players. Even if Mads Anderson had a bad day, he was still good enough to stop goals coming in. Harry Eistead, who we had obviously, uh, you know, on loan, you know, um, they were just, they were just, he was reliable. Uh, Liam Kitchen, you knew that, you know, sometimes a bit gung-ho, but if he got the ball, he, he would, you know, he'd go forwards and we could rely on him. And I looked through the team yesterday and I'm 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 not spotting a leader <clears> and I'm not spotting anybody that seems to have the chest out and let's let's go for this. Body language, it all seems a little bit off. Is there the danger that we could lose out on, on the playoffs, the way we're Absolutely. going? Yeah, Absolutely. Definitely. I'm just looking at the table then and I and I message you guys and I said I think Oxford had a, a deep, uh, Lincoln obviously are coming up, aren't they? I know we've got that game in hand, but it's Portsmouth away, for goodness sake, on a Tuesday night. The ground we don't do well at against yeah. the top side, who's on 90 points. So um, there's every chance when you look at, um, OK, Lincoln are six behind us, but it only takes another couple of dodgy results, a couple of draws, <clears> and <throat> caught, they've, they've, they've caught us right up. Um, you're right, we just look... Like Steve said, I think some players who've, who are looking elsewhere, whose heads and hearts are not in Oakwell, these players who we've said all season, who had great seasons last season, who um, are bang average, absolutely bang average this season, and have done it con consistently been average. Um, you you look, we have got no cutting edge whatsoever. There's no, You look at you look at Alfie May, and I know he's bang on form, but he, he was a match winner, and he makes things happen. We haven't got, and we haven't had, occasionally in flashes, it might be a McAtee one week, it might have been Kane had a purple patch at one point, Cole when he started on, on fire. But we, do not, we, 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 do not have, we don't have strikers, we don't have attacking midfielders who make things happen and win games on their own. We don't have that person who gets you off your seat the football's been dull as dishwater all season. They just look all much of a muchness right through the squad. There's nobody who's head and shoulders, I don't think. Uh, I mean, even Liam Roberts, I know he's had a good season, but, you know, and he made a good penalty save. But there's times when he's looked a bit bang average. Yeah. And and I just think it's, we look just so ordinary. And, and... I don't know. Is that coming from the manager? Is that, I think the players, the players have, have dropped off, but they're almost. I don't want to sound. I'm going to sound really awful. This, but we're almost playing in in the style of the manager who can come across a bit dour and a bit, you know, like, and the playing like that. Whereas when we you look over the last few years and, and we've had some we've had some charismatic managers. I mean, even Duff was, um, Ishmael was, Crikey, Daniel Stendel was. But the, the, the teams played in the spirit of their managers. You know, like last season, Duff was chest out, you know, fist pumping on the on the pitch. Stendhal, we know what he was like on the touchline. And the, and their teams mirrored the manager. And I feel yeah. like this team is mirrored. And I don't know what that could sound really out of because I'm probably having to go at his personality. But 
he comes across very dour in interviews and his team's playing like that. Do you not think, though, as well, like I said about Connell, I think Connell's playing it wrong position. I think Dejivnik... I think yeah. the is playing it wrong position. Yeah. We should have left him in centre of that back three because he's he's got the football in brain that we've now seen that he can play, he can come forward, he can cover other two centre halves. He's put him on that right hand side, put Donkey McCart in middle, and what sort yeah. of back pass for that to keeper that he hit yesterday? Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I agree. I, I, I agree, Steve. I I totally agree, and I said I said to Carlo before we come on, on air, there was a few a few times last yesterday where Charlton put crosses into the box, and from six eight yards out, um, their strikers were towering over our defenders and getting headers in. Uh, yeah. yeah, they went over the bar or whatever, and I'm thinking, well, where's where's the dominance at the back? Um, and maybe that's playing De Giovanni out out of, out of position because when he, when he was in that centre, he, he would come out with the ball, wouldn't he? Um, and it's like and he's it's not like, doing that. No, and it's like Collins has suddenly thought, "Oh, I've suddenly had a bit of a brain fart, and I don't know what my best eleven is." So I'll move everybody around and hope I, I stumble across a formula. But it's it's just unraveling. No, it's and it's difficult as well because we talk about <clears throat> the playoffs. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the table doesn't lie. I just feel we're there heavily subsidised by a really good away form up to yeah. yesterday and a I poor mean, league and a poor league. Let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, hundred percent. And I think now there are some teams that are showing what they can do. I think Oxford's making a bit of a fight, and it's Lincoln are coming up on the outside, and it's probably the worst time to start tinkering with the team. I mean, I, you know, like I'm I'm not a football manager, but um, it's Stephen it's away on Tuesday. Uh, the team have stayed in London rather than travelling up to come back down again, which seems a um, it, it seems a, you know a, a good decision to make. But when you look at that team and you look at the result. Is he going to tinker again? Do we think? Has anybody done anything to deserve well, that, their place? But, or? but that, that to me, Tech Alfie May out of that side yesterday, that looked probably the, the poorest Charlton side I've seen for a long time. We were well capable of getting a result there yesterday. I don't think they were anything spectacular. I think once they got the noses in front, they knew how to, uh, the, the tails were up and they knew how to see the game out. And, and to be honest, in second half, they were the only team that was looking like going to score a, a, the next goal. But we made them look good. I don't think they were that good at all. And but how many times have we said that this season that we've made yeah. the other side look better than they actually are? Yeah, yeah. And and I think that's that's the issue because yesterday again, um, if you look back at Barnsley over the past four or five seasons, we've been at our best. If you look at the Stendhal and Ismail era, um, a, a, a Duff, where we took or tried to take control of a game forward high press that was our danger and and other teams could cope with it i just feel because there is no identity other teams are just saying just go at them and yeah. i defensively especially and i'm not talking to just the defense but just other i think we're absolutely poor and i looked well, yeah. yesterday and I, I i as a child of fan I, you could probably say that's probably one of the poorest teams that's been to the belly this season yeah, yeah, yeah. we're fifth in the yeah. league but you look at last season, don't you? And everybody from Norwood right through, they knew the job to defend. You defended from the front and chasing and harrying and 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 like I say the high intensity. I've not seen any of that this season. But obviously, he plays a different style and it just doesn't work. We're not we're not bossing, bullying teams whatsoever. They're doing it to us. I don't even know what style we play. If somebody no. said to me, "All right, you're a Barnsley supporter. What what what's your style? What would you say?" What type of football inside are you? At one time, you'd be able to say, yeah, we like we like to knock ball about, we keep it down. It's very rare we play at long ball. And it is, or it has been, very rare we play at long ball. We've always been known for playing good football. This season, you tell me. I haven't got a, I have not got a clue. And I you know what? This the negativity now, and it is negative, and I know. You can't really find many positives out of it, but it gets you down. Mm. And I mean, you know, they're wanting you to renew your season ticket, and I will, don't get me wrong, I will. But where's enthusiasm? I'll be yeah. quite honest, over 18s only, I couldn't get two chuffs. I really couldn't, yeah. because I look at them players and we're paying them good money, and they don't get full. I'm sorry, but they don't. Some of them guys turn up on that field and they run around and do very, very little. 
and they collect the paycheck at end of week and they know that they'll be going at end of season or they'll be going to another club. They'll think that they'll be going to a better club. But I'll tell you what, them players that are going that think they're better than they actually are will not be going to any better clubs. No. Not at all. Look at Styles, and Styles going to end up coming back because nobody likes him up in Sunderland. Can't give him away. <laughs> That's no, what no. I mean. So, what no. this to me then is an underlying problem at Barnsley. Summer, think... summer is wrong somewhere. It's got yeah. to be. No, I, I agree, and and, and yeah, I think you hit the you nail on the head when you were saying about we just look like we're going through phases in a game. We're not. We're not we're playing within ourselves. It's like they're not prepared to go that extra 10, 20% bust a gut almost. It's just like we'll get the ball, we'll pass it around. If you don't come off it, fair enough. Nobody's busting a gut. Well, I'm saying nobody, but very few are busting a gut to win it back or any sort of. It's like they're going through the motions and, you, and they're doing it at the business end of the season when we're in the playoffs and we've got something to potentially we still have second to go for. But they don't look like they're playing like they're the 10th and the few more games and I'll be on beach. And, then, yeah. and I'll speak. To me, I'll speak to my agent, yeah. and I'll get the move. That's what they look like. Yeah, we, we've talked a lot about players, and we've talked a lot about the the, the head coach. Um, we asked on uh, Twitter yesterday uh, the, the three word reaction to the match, and actually ninety percent was board resignation overdue, Collins and board out. Um, we've spoken about Collins already. I mean, it's fair to say that we're talking about tinkering with the front players, um, Dallas, Shaw, Watters. All three strikers brought in in the summer. One still at the club, but can't get a look in. Um, the other two, I don't know, maybe it was always the plan, but to me, only like deemed not good enough and therefore gone out on loan. And what is there a percentage to blame to lay with the board and recruitment? Or is it just, yeah, are these, yeah. Are these players good enough? Yeah. Well, you, you only have to look at. Um, we've said it before, with the quality, you go back to go back as far back as say Stendhal's era for, for for argument's sake, and you look at that that squad that went unbeaten all season in League One and got second, and a, a lot of them players are playing in the Premier League and top end Championship. And I know we can't, we're not a club that can keep hold of them. I get that, yeah. but this this selling on and then buying bargain basement in the hope that we find a gem, we find another Styles who might get us two million quid, we find another Brit, Callum Britton who we can sell for one point whatever million and, and we can move all these players on. Eventually you run out of luck and when you start shopping in the National League and League Two, they're the, they're the performances that you get in and I think now, and, and maybe, you know, I know Steve said it a few times, it's a business and, yeah. you know, they're not running us into the ground. But I think we're finally running out of that look of finding these gems every, every now and again. Apart from yeah. Jallo, there's not many gems out there. And you just, you you look at it and Alfie May cost 500 grand. Yeah. Aaron Collins went to Bolton from Bristol Rose in January for 750 grand. We're not talking millions here. And yet we go and get Max Waters instead of Alfie May, who we knew was good enough because he got 20 goals or whatever in a, in a Cheltenham side who were one of the smaller teams in the league. Yeah. We're, we're trying to buy cheap all the time and, and loans and freeze, and it eventually it catches up with you. I've got and to it, say, there were a comment on Twitter um, one day last week which made me chortle, and I did I did copy you guys in on it. Uh, somebody were having, I'd said summit as I usually do, and somebody had disagreed with me, which seems to be quite a regular thing these days. <laughs> and uh, he said, you know, what more do you want? This board's pumping millions into club. And I thought, have I missed? Have I been asleep? Have I been in a coma and what, you know, 28 <laughs> days later or whatever? I haven't seen us put millions into club at all. I know we can have a pint in five seconds. And I know I keep coming back to that because it pisses me off no end. <laughs> but I, 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 I fail to see what some supporters are watching and are thinking is happening to our club because. I would say 90% of us are all of the same mind. The board is running it as a business. Yeah, I've always said that. And that's how you, you, you've got to run a club. But Ian's right. You can't keep selling your prize cow and expect to go and buy a, a pig and it come up to be as good. Yeah. So yeah. you've got to, you know, you've got to weigh that up. But the only way you can weigh that up 
is having people involved in your club that have knowledge of first division championship football. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So bringing a guy from America who's managed in Tin Pot League or whatever it is over there, whether he's played over here or not, is not necessarily the right way to go. Duff went right way to go, but yet again, we didn't want to pay any money. So he went to Swansea and he's doing, I don't know what he's doing now, probably garden fencing or something like that. Um, you know, these these managers don't move on just for laugh. They move on because they're offered, offered better contracts, better money, and we're not prepared to fight for them. Eki went to Leeds. You know, everybody slags him off for that. But would you have him back tomorrow? I bloody would. Because it's somebody who knows the club and it's somebody who knows the football. At the minute, we're just floundering about and we'll be lucky to stay in playoffs. And, uh, you know, I hate to say it, I'll get slagged up Hill and down Dale. I hope we don't make playoffs because I really don't want to go down at Wembley and get absolutely arsehold by Bolton or Peterborough because mm. that's what's going to happen if we play like we are playing. So, so, so we're saying then, just, just, sorry, just, quick, just quickly on that, Carlo. You're right there, like Steve. When you're in this rut now, it's, you can't just turn it on and off like a tap, can you? We can't suddenly start playing like Brazil um, when we've uh, season's finished and we are at playoffs, and suddenly it's like, right, but ding, we're going to play great now. You can't do it. We're stuck in this rut, and that's the danger that you can't get out of it. Yeah, I, I, I completely, I completely agree, and I've said it before. I don't feel that we invest in our better players and managers we don't when they want to go we let them go because we think we'll find the next standal or whatever and we thought so with us baggy we thought so with shop that's by the by i've um, seen comments I, today carlo i don't know if you have i've seen comments today that some supporters who went down there said that some players were arguing amongst themselves um, i don't know how true know. that is I, but I don't know does that that tells you another story as well doesn't it yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I think it's it's throughout, isn't it? I think there is something about him him not not having his best eleven or, or not knowing his best eleven. I mentioned Shaw. Have we got now a best eleven? Just, just out of well, interest, yeah. I'm only asking. <laughs> but let's not forget That's we talked about, we talked about the strikers, Lopata and Shepherd, who we all said early on in the season. Look, I had Lopata down as player of the season. Yeah, yeah. He, look what he is, Shepherd, and I no. I think with a player like Shepard, who comes from a couple of leagues below, he needs time. So, yeah. you know, you, you put him in, he'd probably be better in a back four than a back three, blah, blah, blah. But all yeah. these players that have been brought in, and they're not even at the club. So I think from a recruitment point of view, there, is, there has to be a question mark. Something else you mentioned earlier um, that we put on Twitter, um, some interesting conversations, because um, I spoke to uh, Rob Staten at the last home match, and uh, he was a little bit surprised by the let's say, lukewarm reaction of the fans when, when the teams come on the pitch. And I, I've said it before, say it again, we're not going to revisit it all, but I I just feel that time rider as the players come out and people clapping doesn't create an atmosphere. I, I love it or hate it. And, you know, here we go again. You can loathe Sheffield Wednesday. You can loathe Sheffield United, Liverpool, Man City, Leeds United. But I tell you what, look at Sheffield United in the season they're having in the Premier League. They average half a point a match, I believe, or something like that. But I tell you what, they're all singing their hearts out when the team goes, and that creates an atmosphere within the stadium. Okay, they're not able to replicate it, fair enough, but there's an atmosphere. There's nothing. Half time. You know, we've got... Half time, half time, two remote control cars... (laughs) <laughs> from edge of 18 yeah. yard box into yes. goal it took 20 minutes for one of them to cross <laughs> fucking line who's who's and idea it, it, was that and if that's you know not entertainment I, mean? I don't know what is <laughs> <laughs> and, but the problem is they, they keep they keep talking about don't they about the, the the match experience the fun experience and they're going to invest and they're it's going to so do dated it. it's so dated carlo yeah, it, yeah. It is, i'd, I'd rather yeah, listen i'd rather have that dj playing songs while the, the the subs are warming up and have nothing um the other day I mean, they, they, they had uh, but look at last season hey jude and uh, some of some of the you know you have to pick three three decent tunes that that get the crowd going um and suddenly you've got a bit of an atmosphere for five or ten minutes and then and if the game kicks on you've got something you know 
last season with all, all the scarves and, and um, Hey Jude booming out and all this stuff, you only it's not hard, is it, to pick three bouncing or really good songs that everybody knows that can can just get along. It, it's yeah. just so dated. The whole yeah. thing is is. I, I, I from think 20, that, 30 I, years ago. I like I like the Hey Jude. The problem is when you play it at the start, all the away fans sing it as well, and when you've got six thousand mm. Derby fans or whatever, because they come out of that, that's something else, isn't it? Yeah, but you've got to try summer, haven't you? you oh know, no, I, it, I it, agree. It worked, worked for the whole. It worked in the home end as well. One hundred percent. But I, I, again, and it's been mentioned a few times. They talk about match day experience. If you've got a thousand, I don't know, uh, Cambridge fans. Let's say there were a thousand. Why not put them in the top corner away? Like Barnsley get treated everywhere else. You know, when we went to Newcastle and, and you sit like three floors yeah. up from heaven. Like, why not put them in that top corner away? Mm. You know what I mean? It just seems that on the pitch and off the pitch, are we scoring a few too many on goals? I mean, I, listen. Well, I, it's, I it's, like, it's like you look, don't you? And, then, and I know the club are a bit up against it because where the ground is in the town centre, we all know if you want to, if you want the pre-match pint, you're going to go in the town. You're going to go into town. There's plenty of decent bars. They've got Premier League football, whatever the early match is, a top championship game on. You can watch it. You can have a good natter. There's a good buzz in the town centre. Yeah. And then walking to ground, you know, that, that you know, tradition of walking to ground. and that. But, so I know that how do they get them people that are in the town centre paying, you know, and, and, and enjoying it, having a bit of an atmosphere and, and, and something to get them to the ground early. And it's difficult. But just sticking up a little bit of a, gazebo in 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 high winds and stuff it's, it's not what people want is it they're going to have to think harder about how do you get them folk out of the town center and and paying money into coffers at the club um and again it's dated to have a couple of people who are not in the match day squad asking that doing a q a it's all very predictable and and, and you're gonna say well actually i'll stay with my mates and have a good natter in the pub, and then we'll walk down with 10 minutes to go. And then let's not forget, Good Friday, kids for a quid. I was doing the commentary, so I was in the West I got End. five. Yeah. <laughs> I've got them cleaning my kitchen, garage, and chimney, and job lot. Fantastic <laughs> idea. No, no, they, they, they put something on to get kids in. Fantastic. Less staff in the kiosk in the West End serving the normal. So the queues were enormous. Kids are crying because they can't have the burger or the drink at half time. And it's again, it's no go. Are those kids going to come back? Probably not. Was that because... was that a Good Friday? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, that'll be probably because the, the wages would have been dearer being a bank holiday and they don't want to yeah. pay it. Double time, yeah. innit? Double yeah. time. Yeah. Don't pay it. That. But the thing it, is, we lack, we lack originality. Yeah. That's the thing. Like you say, it's all very dated. And you'd think with somebody like Julianne Key on board, you know, PR guru to the stars <laughs> in America and all that sort of thing. Bring some of that razzmatazz or whatever you want to call it to us. Mm. Yeah, some people will say, oh, we don't want that. Blah, 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 blah. I just have me bit of black pudding and that'll do. Now, let's get some it down there. Let's be original. Let's do something different that other clubs aren't doing. Yeah, mm. hey, Jude, it's all right. But how many other clubs do it? I've listened to, I think I've listened to it twice this weekend on telly from other clubs. Mm. Be original. Come up with some fresh ideas. Yeah. But it all starts from pitch. Because I if you get enough in front pitch, you're not going to get any atmosphere on no, terraces. True. And you're not going to get people coming back. It's yeah. a vicious circle. It really is. Yeah. Um, I think the most interesting thing, if it goes ahead um, this season, well, probably be going into next season or during the summer break, that will happen as Oakwell, is hopefully Callum Simpson having a boxing match on the Oakwell turf, representing his town. Obviously, another fantastic win um, a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it just feels like he's 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 you know he's the heavy hitter at the moment because Barnsley are not really punching anybody out with with, with football at the moment. Oh, I like that. And, I like where yeah, you did that, mate. A little bit of a segue into a box. There's the, uh, beautiful. There's your the, the headline for the podcast. I tell you what, hey, he's good, isn't he? Really? Um, I asked you both yesterday to sum up the um, the match in three words. Did any of you do it? <laughs> <laughs> now then, I can come up with three words of varying degrees, but at minute, and again, it's absolutely fucking pointless for me. That's my three words because I cannot generate. And anybody who says we're in fifth and it's oh, it's fun, it's not. We're in fifth and it's a false position because we're crap. But I, 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 well, I sort of, I, I somewhat agree. We are in fifth. That's fantastic. 
But there's a lot of teams biting at our feet that playing a lot better football and getting better results than we are. And I think that's the danger. The fact that we're there, even if you deserve to be there, but if we finish in seventh, it's still been a shit season. And you can say, but we were in the top six for, you know, 30 weeks. Well, you, you can polish a turd all you want, can't yeah. you? You know, you can yeah. put hundreds and thousands on it. You can do whatever you want. But ultimately, we're, going, we're treading water at the minute and other teams are going to catch us up if we're not careful. I think a lot of teams around us will be thinking it's a good time to play Barnsley. Yeah. I, I yeah. generally. Um, it's Steve and it's next Tuesday night. Ian, you might as well go first. Uh, the team's staying down south. Um, let's hope they get some, I don't know, team bonding in or something. It, it needs something, you know. Um, even, if, even if they just like have a big fight and fall out and then get it out of the system. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Get Callum Simpson <laughs> down, <laughs> definitely. Take them all Both along. All lining up on Tuesday with black eyes and busted. That's fantastic. That. Yeah. Now you could have that at Oakwell. Connell and Kane in the tag team. They could go wrestling tag team. Russell running on with his Givnia, you know, tag. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I bet he'd be good at that. My mum would be on Russell because he's just yeah. a big plug, really. <laughs> Um, so what do you think then? Steve and it's away. Um, now, it's a Steve Evans side. And if one thing Steve Evans could do is he, he can... His squad will be ready. His team will be ready. And they've had some not so good results. They've had some fantastic results. Difficult place to go. Um, it's an awkward time for Barnsley just having lost that, you know, fantastic record of... of it's now two away defeats. Can the Reds bounce back or will... Uh, big... Well, we're, we're always good for giving a goal away, at least, aren't we? So uh, I'm going to go one-one draw. I think I think it's going to be a tough game. Yeah. And also, second last question: Where are we going to end up at the end of the season? Because there's not many matches left now. There's two left at home. What? What? Are, where are we going to end up? Are we going to be yeah. part of the playoffs or not? <sighs> uh, so we've got Stevenage, we've got Stevenage, Pompey, Reading, Blackpool, Northampton at home. Reading. Blackpool away. And it, I, can only see, I can only see one win out of that. I really can only see one win, and that's Northampton last game. I th yeah, yeah. I, um, Who's the last home match? Northampton. Northampton. Oh, that's Northampton, sorry. Yeah. Right, yeah. I think at the minute, after watching that and the, and the last few games, I'd say we might end up seventh. Maybe just just maybe getting six, but that might be because if Lincoln run out of steam or, or Oxford do, I can't see us finishing fifth. Steve, Steve and it's away. Totally agree with Ian, to be honest. But I, I, I just think if there is, if there's starting to be some infighting, um, I don't know how true it is. Apparently, Collins was supposed to be doing a Q and A at club last week. I don't know if anybody else heard. Oh, mate of mine were telling me that there were a few, quite a few fans down there were doing a Q and A with him, and he didn't turn up. So I don't know how true that is. Somebody, I'm sure. Uh, there was in. one a couple of weeks ago, but it's more than a few weeks ago. There was one. No, it were only only last week, as far as I know. Oh, I don't but anyway, know. that's beside the point. Um, Steve Nitch away. I'll be honest. If they continue with the way that they are going, with the infighting, with the complete lack of direction from Collins, I can see Steve Nitch taking it. I can see Reading coming on Saturday and winning as well mm. because they're yeah, fight, they're fighting they for their lives and and. They they got we're not Lincoln, didn't they? Yeah, and we we are not. We're just not fighting. Yeah. Um, I can see the next two games being draws, and draws will kill us if we're not careful. Yeah, yeah. I, I I would even go as far as to say I can see Stevenage doing us on Tuesday, but I'll not be that negative. I'll go for one apiece. In fact, you know what? Now I will be negative. I'm going to go nil nil. I, well, I'll be more negative. I think we'll lose two nil on Tuesday, and I think Good we'll lad. draw. I think we'll draw at home. I don't who's think. Your, who's your first goal scorer? <laughs> <laughs> nil nil at home. <laughs> the thing is, I'm going to ask you before we finish, and I'm going to ask you because I know Carlo likes me asking these strange and peculiar questions. Are we having Collins next season? Then, or are we do one team gone? I, I'll, give you two, I'll give you two answers. Right, I'll give you mine, and I'll give you what I think the board will do. I think the board will keep him because he's cheap, and even if we miss out in the playoffs, they'll. they'll, they'll uh, Polish it up that it's been a successful season and he's done this, that and the other. So I think they'll keep him. Me personally, there are there are far better managers out there. And I know he's got to learn his trade, but I think there's some far better managers out there who can do a far better job with this squad. Correct. I, um, I think what they will do is uh, keep him, yeah. With the exodus impending, because we're not going to go up, um, and if there's no playoffs, when players like Kane, uh, players like... Call, I think Connell, 
you know, there's some players there that, that might be. I think what needs to be done is he needs to, they need to develop a DNA of how they want Barnsley to play and recruit to that plan rather than trying to fit a circle through a square peg. Just, you know what I mean? It's all a bit of the, a bit of this. We need to have an identity. I love to see us go back to that high energy, high pressing game. And I know at that time you could have five subs and, you know, there were no, there were, there were no spectators and now it might have been easier. But we had an identity, and I'd rather lose 2 0, but saying, you know what, that was a good side we've lost because we're just limping. We're but just... We, did, we did it last season, didn't we? So, yeah. and how many sides had to match us for effort uh, before they even the quality would, you know, if they, it doesn't matter how good a team they were, we, 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 we took some big scalps last season in that league. This, this time last year, Sheffield Wednesday came to town on a 21 or 22 game on beaten road. What a game that was. And we no, knew, we, we it, let's say never in doubt, we had confidence in our team. We've got Reading coming well, next to week, and I'm worried. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think that says it all. Right, lads, um, let's uh, let's meet again next week. Let's see where we are. Let's see if we've got some points on the board or further points on the board. And, um, yeah, Ian, again, well done uh, mm -hmm. today. Go and put your feet. I know you've had a bath already, but maybe ask the missus to massage your feet. Or, you know. Ooh, bit of massaging tonight, mate. Looking forward to that. Well, she's she's getting the pudding. There's a bit of pudding when I've had my dinner. I've done the podcast. <laughs> I said, save the pudding till after the podcast. I can't be too full on podcast. <laughs> You've heard it here. We're gonna go. We're gonna call it quits after 36 minutes and 20 <laughs> seconds because Ian is going for his pudding. Thank you for hey. the Reds report. We'll be back next week. <laughs>